It is 8.40 right now. In October, John Glenn returned to space, making him the oldest man ever to accomplish such a feat, and I was lucky enough to witness the event myself and got to meet some incredibly interesting people. Along with photographer Dale Lutz, I got to talk with former astronaut Buzz Aldrin, news legend Walter Cronkite. See, there's Dale on the far left, and and Buzz in the middle, and Walter Cronkite. Wow, that was really cool on the right-hand side. And I also got to meet our next guest, Robert McMillan, a NASA expert. And I was so interested in what he was doing down there. I asked him to come on the show. And Bob, I was so happy that you agreed to come on the show. My pleasure. Now, why were you there? What were you doing there covering the event? Well, I uh, have a background in television. Uh, you have to excuse my voice. I think we both have the same thing. That's fine. I have a background in television. And I decided to uh, make a program devoted to space flight. And so me and a good friend of mine, Rick Reardon, He's my camera operator. We go down and cover the, uh, the launches. And we also uh, interview astronauts and tour the facilities and do special interest uh, stories like on uh, preparation of space food and that type of thing. And uh, it's been real popular. We've been doing it about four years now. Right, and you go to different schools in your space mm -hmm. suit and right. bring this cool video and all of these great little props and stuff like that and educate kids on the space program. And how is it received? Oh, it's great. The kids are really excited about space. I mean, I love teaching and uh, I think that Possibly the kids don't get enough information through the normal media channels and uh, so I can come out as sort of like uh, a person who's, who's involved with the program and can tell them what's going on with the space program currently and what our uh, future plans are for space. And you sent me some video that we've been showing all day mm -hmm. today about the microgravity thing. Oh, that was very exciting. Explain what we're seeing right well, here. Well, here I am. I'm testing a, uh, uh, a top. You can see how it, how it spins. And here is, uh, well, kind of a messy way to drink water in space. It sort of just floats there with no gravity. Uh, just put a little pressure in the bottle, and you sort of, uh, you just have to float over and meet up with it. It was uh, kind of a messy way to drink water, but it, uh, more interesting, I think. Yeah, Pat Barry wanted to know if you ever tried to drink beer that way. Actually, I don't drink beer, but I imagine it would do the same, <laughs> could do the same <laughs> thing. Uh, you can see uh, yeah, negotiating here without gravity. This was my, uh, my imitation of Superman. I figure I can't do that down here on Earth. So I just fly along. Uh, actually, the, the experience was very pleasurable for me. There were some astronauts aboard this, the uh, airplane that got sick. Uh, I told them I would not reveal who they were. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's a real neat experience. It's, it's more or less like floating in water, but of course there's no water. Awesome. And on all those little props that you brought right there, um, tell, us the history, tell us about that. Well, I, uh, I got the sixth graders at Mount, he Mount Healthy High School, which is where I teach, mm -hmm. and uh, told them to think of some projects, some toys that uh, they might like to try the action of without gravity. So I got all, all these different uh, possibilities, and I can only take like 20 of them. But I went up, tested them out uh, with zero gravity gravity and came back and reported and it's amazing to see how a lot of the toys that, that uh, kids play with uh, are dependent on gravity. They just do not work Absolutely. Uh, out, out in space or when there's no gravity. Tell us what you have here. Well I brought a couple of things. First of all this is a, uh, a piece of gingerbread that was flown on the Mir space station with the Russian uh, astronauts. Uh, apparently it wasn't eaten and it was brought, brought back. Um, I haven't tried it. It looks like it's a little uh, Got a little bit hard. It looks a little over time. bad, Bob, but, is what uh, it looks. But, it, but the fact that it was flown on the Mir space station <laughs> makes it kind of very cool. kind of unique. Yeah. But what our astronauts take up is more something like this. Um, this is a uh, a dinner, typical dinner where you have peas here and and a chicken and rice mixture. And what the astronauts do is they in the galley, which is on the mid deck, they have a, a device where they can inject hot or cold water, and then they mix it up with that. And uh, I'm sure it's not li like eating at a restaurant, but th this has to be prepared specially for the astronauts to prevent uh, contamination because they don't want the astronauts to get sick in space. I mean, getting sick here on Earth is bad enough, but in space it could be, could be fatal. Great. Right. And show me what this was okay, earlier because we were a, playing with this right, thing. This is a, um, an EVA space glove. This is what the astronauts wear to, uh, to take spacewalks, to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, to, to, do, to launch satellites. Uh, right now they're building the International Space Station and they're using gloves very similar to these. The fingertips have heaters in them to keep their, their fingers warm because it's like minus 250 yeah. degrees.